Hi, everyone. It's me, Eartha. Thank you for joining me today. I'm in my office today. We're having a little bit of stormy weather outside, so I thought it'd be safer um, to have our session today inside. So I hope you don't mind. But uh, welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. Last time when we were together, I shared information about how to uh, really live in accordance as far as our actions that matches our values. And I wanted to build on our last session because I felt like there's a lot more to be said, but I think I got the basics out. And so during our time together, I want to go in a little bit deeper with what triggers us to get off of our values and get us distracted so that our actions are not supporting our values. What happens? I realize that is a very broad question and there's probably many, many different answers, different situations, different medical conditions, different uh, developmental uh, situations. And so I'm not going to go into all those details. <laughs> I just wanted to, um, you know, bring that to the, to the table, uh, being aware that that may occur as far as getting us distracted off of our actions, of our values. A lot of experiences, a lot of different cultures, all kinds of things. But I, I think what I'm going to share today, I think it will apply universally. So give me a chance and let's get started. Oh, but before I get started, I really want to thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to have a platform to bring Transition Awareness Breathing to you, especially in this new format. It's been a bit of a, a steep learning curve. So uh, thank you, Mary Lou and Sam, for getting our, our sessions out. Uh, you guys are the experts, and I really appreciate all that you do. Also, you know, I want to start something a little bit new. I want to say hi to uh, and thank you to our listeners who give me hearts. <laughs> thank you for the likes and the thumbs up. Uh, Steph and Arella, thank you guys. I know there's many more out there. Uh, I'll check my um, my podcast, and if I see your name, I'd be happy to i give you a shout out because I really appreciate, this is for you, it's for me, and I hope you that you share the podcast with your friends and your families. So today it's going to be, I'm looking at my notes here because I want to keep myself on track. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about a, um, one thing that gets us off of our values is anger and stress. And still that's very broad. So I'm going to narrow it down a little bit, and we may continue this this uh, discussion next time. The information I'm bringing to you is from um, a course that I took by Dr. W. Robert Nay, and he is um, a professional, and uh, he has his PhD, and he works. Uh, out of Georgetown University School of Medicine. And I thought that when I took his class, all the pieces were fitting together. Everything was scientifically based. Uh, the evidence of, of um, anatomy and physiology as far as reaction of stress on the body and on our uh, psychological uh, processes made a lot of sense. But then I thought, how how do I get that information out? I mean, um, in my experience of teaching is my responsibility as an educator to break the information down 
for people to learn. I mean, me just having information and saying, oh, you know, that was a great course. That's not going to help anything. I mean, I'm, it fulfills uh, my need for uh, more information, but it really doesn't help people with stress if I just keep the information. So here I go. I'm going to share this information with you in little bits, in little bites. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment, send me an email. Okay. So what happens to our body if we hang on to stress? That's my opening question. And I invite you to kind of ponder that as we continue our discussion. Let's talk about stress, the first thing. If you drew a bell-shaped curve, kind of like that. So now, let's say here's the bell-shaped curve. So on this side, this is kind of like low stress. And really, if it's way over here, uh, Dr. Ney um, shared that, and it makes sense because this would be kind of like under uh, under um, load of stress. Stress, I'm just going to put under, and I probably could use the text, but uh, here we go leave it to okay so if we're under stress this means you know it, there could be a clinical reason hormonal uh, excessive tiredness there could be something going on but we're really not um, under a lot of stress to get us moving so we need a little bit of stress to motivate us, I use the word motivate, and I don't like that word because it seems like, you know, motivation, motivational speaker. What I mean is to stimulate our activity. I like stimulate a little bit better. So, and if we're way over here, this is too much stress. It's an overload. I'm just going to put over. Overload of stress. You know, we're too far. So if I if I used like a pain scale, you know, us nurses, you know, I, I just really appreciate the pain scale because it gives me a number. <laughs> so if this was a zero, and I can gauge things a little bit with the numbers. This is per, this is personally for me. And so I'm adding to Dr. Nay's um, graph. Um, and that's part of my program, Transition Awareness Breathing. I'm personalizing it so I can break it down for you. So if we had a pain scale of zero to 10, zero meaning absolutely no stress, 10 meaning off the chart stress, here is where uh, anger lies, Okay, anger and um, oh, uh, maybe um, violence, lies, let's put a V, violence, lies. Okay, so usually a person doesn't go from zero to 10 automatically when they're stressed because stress is a normal survival uh, reaction from the body. It needs stress, a little bit of stress to survive. So where's that, where is that medium? Where, where does, where's the best healthy stress? Well, according to Dr. Mc, Dr. Ney, um, on his graph, he had the best stress best stress was right here at the top of the apex, top of the mountain. <laughs> but when you get towards, you start, start dropping when this, that's not straight, sorry. 
But when you get towards the slope, the down slope, that's when the stressors, we call it the stress zone. And I'm thinking about like a marketing curve. Um, you know, you have a new product, you're coming out and this is the top performers. And then you, you start having this line uh, of decrease um, interest in the customers. And so your product starts to um, not sell. And so the marketers get stressed. <laughs> That's how that's how my mind is is running, but with people, regular people, um, in Doctor Nay's research, he's identifying as right here when this the best when it starts to get a little bit in the in down in in the uh, the lower stroke uh, slope. Here is when we start showing the stress signs the. Uh, fight or flight or freeze. And I like how he um, represented, I'm going to bring out my notes here. Let's see here. I'm going to put this right here. And he, he shared with us the different faces of anger. And I thought I would share that with you. So when we he was um, sharing about the different faces of anger as passive-aggressive, sarcasm, cold anger, hostility, aggression, and abuse starts to show up around in here and when it begins to be uh, actually it, the it'll be towards the this area right here between ten and maybe this is seven different for other people everybody's different uh, so what happens is we start having negative physical responses from anger that is is coming from our stress. And that's what I want to show you. And I want to share with you that I think I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to make it go away. Close the whiteboard. Okay. So when we are on that other side of the curve and we're starting to show signs of stress, uh, it is really helpful to be aware of how our bodies are responding to the stress. And you know, Dr. Nay had a whole class on it, but I'm bringing the highlights out because one thing that he mentioned in his class is when we start feeling our stress levels, getting to a point where it is starting to to negatively affect us physically and mentally, he recommended mindfulness helps dampen the, the anger responses. And I was so happy. I mean, it's all clinically proven. And so... Hold on one. I'm going to, yeah, okay. So what happens if we stay in a, in a state of prolonged anger? So we're going to touch on that. Have you ever known anybody who kind of just kind of hangs on to anger, hangs on to stress? Uh, any situation that happens reminds them of a situation where they have to kind of revisit and relive the the stressful situation so here's some medical things that could happen some maybe some physiological things that could happen it prolonged stress increases 
our blood sugars because the body feels like, oh, there must be something going on. I got to give the body more energy so that we can take off because we're getting ready to flee. It constricts the cardiovascular system. All the blood is, is concentrating on the most important organs because there must be something going on. Uh, you know, that's the body's response. So we got to be ready to fight or flee. It decreases, prolonged stress decreases our immune system. You know, the, the ability to, to fight off uh, different elements. I'm just going to make sure I don't miss anything. It also breaks down protein. Our bodies, our muscles. Protein is needed for healthy development to sustain health. It increases muscular skeletal stiffness and pain. It also um, causes us to not to be as focused because our mind is such in a state of um fleeing or fighting that we don't see things as clearly as we should. Some people may get um, migraines and headaches all from a chronic stress. And one thing to kind of take note is that when we're in a situation and we can't release, we are, let me say, and we do not allow ourselves to release the stress, this chronic uh, stressful center, situation, our body kind of builds on it. So then it's harder to come down to calmness because we're always in a state of tenseness, of vascular constriction, of high blood sugar. And when those situations occur, the body responses to high blood pressure, but response for high blood pressure, um, high blood sugar, headaches, you know, all those different kinds of medical conditions. So that's just a little bit of what happens when we are in a state of long chronic stress. The body doesn't, you know, we weren't made to, to, to uh, hang on to stress for a long period of time. I go back to what I'm saying before, a little stress is good. We need a little stress so that we're not underloaded. You know, if we're not stressed and we can't get out of bed, we can't participate in in life, well, that's, that's on the other side of the, the bell curve. And that's not um, very, very good either because, you know, we're not helping ourselves survive. It's, in a mindfulness uh, point of view, where we are not participating in self-care. So mindfulness helps to open up the cardiovascular system because we breathe and we relax. We bring our we bring our stress to a lower point. So if I am paying attention to my body and I can tell something is triggering me and I could feel that for me it's different for you. It may be something different. You know, your body, listen to your body. Number one, for me, my neck gets stiff. <laughs> um, so when I feel that stiffness, I have to be aware of it. And because I'm aware of it, I'm very, very conscientious about making sure I don't allow my neck to get stiff. I don't allow a situation to allow me to get so stressed where my neck is stiff. And that takes practice. And so using that, that scale from zero to 10, I'll ask, you know, I ask my students, I ask my, my children on a scale of zero to 10, how would you rank how you're feeling as far as your, your stress? And so let's say, you know, they say, oh, well, seven. Okay, what can we do to bring that level down to 
a five. I'm being realistic. I'm not expecting if something is really stirring and it's causing a lot of stress, I don't expect myself to go down to a, a two or, or a five or whatever is, is comfortable for me. So I may do something to help me um, bring myself down to a lower level. I recommend uh, just a informal breathing, a informal practice of concentrating on the breath, taking a breath in the nose, blowing out through the mouth, and adding one more thing to that is starting to pay attention to your body. How, what's going on with my, my body? What pressures do I feel? How does my legs feel? How does my feet feel? How does my arm feel? My arms are tight. I'm going to talk to my, my arm. Okay, arm. Okay, you're, you're tight. You're number eight. Let's go down to number seven. Loosen, breathe, and just concentrate on the breath and bringing that arm to a lower level of stress. And moving throughout the body, it's like a body scan, informal practice. And then concentrate on or using an image of... Okay, I'm at a eight right now. I'm going to bring myself down to a five. And then I'm going to reevaluate myself. And I'm going to ask myself, how am I feeling? And do not allow yourself to place negative judgment. Because this is non-judgment time. This is not a time to place judge judgment on yourself or judgment on the other person or the situation. And this is, I think, in my opinion, the most difficult part. To breathe and just accept now is now. I'm right here. I'm not injured. I am aware of what's going on. I'm aware that I'm angry. It, admit that, yeah, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm not going to hide it. I'm aware. I'm going to move through this anger because I want to deal with this situation. And I want to be clear in thought. And when I'm clear in thought, I'm going to be clearer so that I can communicate to whoever I need to communicate to in a calm fashion because calmness is my strength. I know, you know, we look at social media and sometimes we can get stuck on the viral social media where it shows people, you know, in different situations, just losing it, just totally out of control. And unfortunately, sometimes someone gets injured, someone gets hurt, someone gets killed. And unfortunately, our social media has become so malignant in, in, in using that type of platform as, as entertainment, but disguising it as news. And so we, we need to be aware Everything, we need to be aware. What can I change? I cannot change how social media platforms are being used, but I can change how I respond to stress. So recognizing what, what you have control over and what you do not have control over. And then bringing in gratitude. What are you thankful for right now? And as you're breathing and bringing yourself down to calmness, concentrate and focus on 
what you're thankful for. And the positive focus and the positive aspects of what you are grateful for. And just talking to you, I feel like more calm. <laughs> um, in in this uh, this session, now I'm ready to discuss what I need to talk about with a situation. Let's all take a breath. I'm going to share a practice with you. Um, but before I share that practice with you, I have a small little uh, clip. It's a case study. And at the end of the case study, ask yourself, how do you feel? If you were in that situation, how would you feel? That the situation is totally made up. I made it up. Um, and then ask yourself, how do you think the other people in that scenario felt? And and give it a ranking. I have the questions at the end of the, the video. And then I would like to share a practice with you. And I hope this all comes together. And I'm counting on Mary Lewis Sam to help me out. Um, and I um, am working on getting smoother and a little bit uh, more of a expert and bringing in this uh, these different types of media platforms to you, but I just think it, it adds a little bit of variances and varieties so that you get a chance to practice what we've talked about. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy the practice that's coming up next. And um, what this practice is going to do is, is a... Uh, a breathing uh, exercise and we're going to bring in some imagery and we're going to stimulate some positivity and help our, our neurons, our brain cells kind of expand past this, our negative uh, or our stressful zones. So thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to you again right after this practice. Well, not after the practice, but I'll talk to you again after we do our practice session. Okay. <laughs> Thank you and enjoy the video. You're the CEO of your organization. You and your spouse have worked hard to build your organization. You're both highly respected in your communities. You've been giving charities to different organizations, your spiritual organizations, really appreciate all the efforts you've done. You've been looking forward to this vacation. It took years for you to make reservations in this very special spot. But before you got to your vacation spot, you got a phone call from your daughter. She was involved in an accident. You decided to go for a swim and cool off. And then you see this guy moving next to your spot. Hey, what's he doing? Your daughter says she was involved in an accident. And the memories of that phone call starts to haunt you. She's okay, but she doesn't think she and her family will be able to make it. You won't be able to see the grandchildren. You were looking forward to playing with all your uh, grandchildren and spending time with your daughter and her spouse. Now, things are changing. Plans have to be changed. You this is not fair. Life is not fair. How can this be going on? Why is this happening? What kind of world is this? My daughter said the person who hit her ran off. So it's now a hit and run. This is wrong. I hate this place.
Hi everyone, I would like to guide you in this practice. I encourage you to get yourself in a comfortable position, whether it's sitting or laying down, whatever is comfortable for you. As you're getting yourself ready for this practice, Pay attention to if there's any pressure or pain and use this time to readjust. Notice the pressure, notice the pain, readjust. The purpose of any of these practices is not to cause any discomfort or pain or, or anything. So I encourage you just to participate in your own pace. Um, not to cause any judgment so you do what is comfortable for you now I invite you to in your mind's eye go to a place we're on uh, our summer season here and it may be a vacation spot, a vacation place, or it may be a place where you have been before or a situation that you experienced that was very pleasant. And I invite you to keep that image in your mind as we go through our practice. Take a breath in through your nose, a nice easy breath in your nose and blow it out your mouth. And we're not going to count, we're enjoying our time. This is your time. And we're going to focus and enjoy the now of being calm, finding the calmness, the thing that we enjoyed about that special place, that special time, bring it to now it's a memory and we're not living in the past we're bringing something a souvenir from that situation we're going to bring it the calmness the pleasantness and we're going to just hold it for a minute and just envision yourself holding the calmness i'm i have my hands like propped open like I'm like I'm going to carry that calmness and I'm going to place that calmness right right inside it's always been there it's I'm, you could put your hands on your heart or on your stomach and just notice as you're breathing and you're holding that calmness that pleasantness and you're breathing in and you're blowing out and be aware of how you are feeling your feelings now letting go of any distractors that is taking your attention from now, from the now, as you hold the pleasantness, the feelings of that special time. Maybe the feeling, maybe during that time you were vacationing on the beach and you hear the waves or you could smell the ocean 
smells. Take a breath in and blow out. And now pay attention to the breath, the coolness or the warmthness of your breath. Pay attention and be aware of the temperature in the room, any, any noises, and there doesn't have to be a lot of noises, it could be just the wind, birds. you're in the office, could be the air conditioning, you're aware of it. And now bring your awareness to how you're feeling now. What is your stress like now? If you had to rank your stress on a scale of zero to ten, what would you what would you say your stress level was? And if you want to decrease that stress number as you take a breath in and blow out. Keeping in focus in the back of your mind that pleasantness. What could you change in your situation right now that may be contributing to your stress? What can you change? And what are the things that you cannot change? And for those things that you right now may not be able to change, are you ready? Are you willing? Just to put those things on the back wall for right now. We may not be able to let it go. We want to keep it in our vision, but can we just put it on the back wall so it so it doesn't take front stage? That pleasant feeling that you're feeling, that memory, bring that towards your front stage. And enjoy the pleasantness of that pleasant memory being in the front stage. Thank you. As we bring our session to a close, I hope this was helpful for you. Take a breath in and blow out and enjoy your calmness. Have a great day and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Also, I look forward to sharing my new book with you very soon and I will put a a picture of it on my Facebook page. So visit my Facebook, Transition Awareness Breathing tab for the descriptions and I think I might be putting some uh, discounts for the first few people who are purchasing my book. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye.